to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Good morning, Leak Springs, and welcome back to in-person worship. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise. Come on and give God some glory for all the things that he has done, for all the ways that he has made. Come on and give God some hand claps of praise. Come on and give him some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We ask that you continue to stand and join the praise and worship team as we prepare to sing the songs of Zion. Amen. And then I will come back and I will give you scripture and then we will be led to the throne of grace. The Lord is blessing me right about right now. now. Oh, right now. Oh, the, the Lord, Lord is blessing me right now. Right now. Oh, right now. Oh, right now. Oh, he will walk me up this morning. And he's done. you please continue to stand 
and join us in the book of Colossians. Colossians, the third chapter, beginning at verse 12. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Verse 17, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Let us pray. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God is once and again, God, we assemble in your presence. God giving you thanks, God giving you glory, and God giving you honor for all the things that you have done. Lord God, we come right now, God, and say we have not done everything that you have asked us to do. God, we have not dotted every I, nor have we crossed every T. But because we serve a loving and forgiving God, we come to you right now with a repentant heart, with a humble heart, God, asking that you forgive us of all our sins and shortcomings. God, we thank you for just being a mighty good God. God, we thank you for the rain, and God, we thank you for the sunshine. God, we thank you for the ups, and God, we thank you for the downs. Because God, even in the midst of them all, God, you are still there to guide us and lead us. God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you saturate this place with your presence. Fill it with your anointing, oh God. God, let every word that fall out of the mouth of our pastor on this morning, God, let it fall on good ground. That some heart may be changed, oh God, and some soul may be saved. And that some bow down head, God, may be lifted up. Oh God, we just thank you, God, for the assembly on this morning. And God, we ask that you do a new thing in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the blessed Holy Ghost, we do pray. He is Lord. He is Lord.
Amen. Before you take your seat, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's good to see you. Come on and turn to your other neighbor and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, it's good to see you. Now look at somebody across the room and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, let's have some church. Come on and say it like you mean it. Let's have some church. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we will have our health and wellness by Deacon Clyde Huff. And then we will come back with another spiritual selection. Good morning, Lee Springs. Okay, we continue to uh, see the numbers of the virus going down, the number of positive cases, uh, which is good news on the horizon. We're now seeing at least the least number of hospitalizations and the least number of positive cases that we've seen in months. But a subvariant of the Omicron variant <coughs> called the BA.2 has been identified in the United States according to CDC data. The BA.2 subvariant accounts for nearly 55% of COVID-19 cases today. The BA.2 is more infectious, but it's not nearly as deadly as the vaccine seen in the past. That's why it's so important that we get our vaccine and we get our boosters. As of Monday, the CDC said that Americans old, older than 50 with underlying medical conditions and anyone over 65 may get an extra second booster shot to increase their immunity um, against the, the virus. But data has shown that about 65% of Americans are fully vaccinated and around 44% of those eligible have had a first booster. So in the coming months, researchers say that we probably will see an uptick in the number of cases, but the severity of the cases will not be anything compared to what we've gone through in the past. So we must continue to do what we need to do to keep ourselves safe, to keep our families safe, and just know that getting that extra shot is increases your chances of a little uh, better layer of protection against any virus that may appear. All right, thank you. Amen. We thank Deacon Huff for our health updates, and we ask that everybody please govern yourselves accordingly. Now we will have another selection by the praise team, and the next voice you hear will be that the none other than our pastor, the Reverend Bruce Hurst, coming to break the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Oh, my name. 
you know my name and oh how he walks with me and oh how he talks with me and oh how he tells me that I Most holy God, it's, it's another day's journey. You have been so good to us. You watched over us all night last night. No hurt or harm befall us. And you kept back that enemy called death and let us see a day that we never seen before. You sure have been good to us. You protected us from COVID-19 and those who had COVID, you brought them through. You are a mighty good God. And for that, we're thankful. We're thankful that we were able to come back to the house of prayer to, to worship you in spirit and truth. We are thankful for that. We thank you, Lord, now that we're here. I pray now that your presence will fill this room, fill my heart, fill my mouth. And that I might say a word on your behalf and that you be glorified. And then take all the glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Again, we give the Lord thanks and praise. And he is so wonderful and so marvelous. And we give him, we give him thanks uh, for our presence here today. Amen. And I am elephant happy and elephant and hippopotamus glad to see you all. Amen. Thank the Lord. It's been a long time. Amen. Amen. It's been a long time. So good to 
so good to see each of you. And um, for many, it's been like a year and a half, two years that we've not um, that we've not had in-person worship. Uh, we have been gathering our praise team and some of the officers. But I thank God for you, and I've longed to see you. And I thank God He has kept you and and blessed you and watched over you. And for that, we're so thankful. And we're so thankful for that. I want to thank our men's ministry for spring cleaning on yesterday. Uh, we thank you so very much for your efforts and, and cleaning. We thank the Lord for, for you, all of our ministers, our praise team, who and our, also our media ministry, who has been working so diligently and so hard. And so good to have my wife, Camille, here. Amen. Amen. We're asking that you certainly would uh, pray for us, Camille and I. We have a kind of a new medical uh, situation going on, and we need your prayers for uh, for us. So continue Amen. to pray for us, uh, that the Lord would bless us, and the Lord, the Lord would keep us. Amen. Amen. The gospel is recorded by St. Matthew, chapter 26, verse I'm going to commence at verse 65 and read through verse 68. I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible, the NIV. We find these words. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, he has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He's worthy of death, they answered. Then they spit in his face and struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you. Others slapped him and said, prophesy to us, Master, who hit you. With your prayer and saying with the aid of the Holy Spirit, I want to talk about the slap that was heard around the world. The slap that was heard around the world. Men of America's watched in disbelief on last Sunday when Will Smith walked on the stage of Dolby Theater and slapped Chris Rock in the face. Many thought it was staged, some thought it was scripted, and some thought it was a prop. Chris Rock said to Jada, I love you, G.I. Jane, too. Can't wait to see it. She was highly offended due to suffering from alopecia, an autoimmune disease that results in the loss of hair. She was highly offended. Now, she wasn't offended by her open marriage. She wasn't offended with her relationship with her son friend, August Alcina the rapper and singer. He wrote a song describing their relationship entitled Entanglement, how he was jaded by her beauty, entangled in those sheets with your wife, but she wasn't offended by those lyrics, but she was offended by a joke. After Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, he went back to his seat shouting out derisive language and vulgar ranting. To me, he casted a dark cloud over, over winning the Oscar Best Actor for his work in the film, King Richard. The entire episode casted Amer African Americans in a bad light. It played directly into our counterpart stereotypes of us. <laughs> Will Packer, led the first all-black producing team of the Oscar. Regina Hall and Wanda Sykes, two of the hosts, 
African American women. Will Packer said the Oscar slap is probably a moment that will never be forgotten in the history of the Academy Awards. Saints of God, I'm not trying to downplay or diminish Will Smith slapping Chris Rock, but there was another slap, a slap that was heard around the world. When wicked men, when evil men slapped God, that was a slap that was heard around the world. In our biblical text this morning, it's Thursday evening, the evening before our Lord's crucifixion. He has been arrested and accosted by the Roman soldiers. He has been before old man Annas, the former high priest who still had the power of the high priest. This was his first trial. Now we must remember that Annas and his family had managed to turn the high priesthood into an incredible profitable business and they had amassed enormous wealth through it. They did this by collecting license fees from the brokers who changed money and sold sacrificial animals on temple grounds. They had gotten rich at the expense of people who came to worship God. They put profit before people. Remember, uh, Bible readers on two occasions, Jesus had purged the temple by driving out the money changers and those who sold animals. My house should be a house of prayer. My house should be a house of worship and not a den of thieves. For old man Annas, Jesus was not good for business. Like an organized crime boss, Jesus had to be dealt with. Jesus was in Annas' pocketbook, so he had to get rid of Jesus. Now during his second trial, he's face to face with Caiaphas, the high priest, the head of the Jewish religion. He has a Sanhedrin council. There were no collaboration of the two witnesses that came forth. Their testimony was flawed against Jesus. Jesus remained in silent. He held his peace. And then finally in verse 63, Frustrated Caiaphas charged Jesus with an oath. I put you on oath by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Obviously, he was familiar with Jesus' claim that he and the Father were one. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. He knew publicly that Jesus and God, Jesus said him and the Father was as one. Jesus was both Messiah. He was the Son of God. Then Jesus said in verse 64, you have said so, but I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, on the right hand of the Mighty One coming on the clouds of heaven. It was all that Caiaphas needed to hear. Tore his clothes, which was forbidden by Levitical law, we don't need no more witnesses. You've heard his blasphemy, claiming to be God. He immediately asked for a verdict. They duly answered, he's deserving of death. Saints of God, after the verdict, the courtroom erupted into hysteria and rage. It was as though the very demons of hell Possess the rulers. These were religious folk. Folk who went to church. They spit in Jesus' face. A social insult. When I was a little boy, if you wanted to start a fight, just spit in somebody's face. It was a social insult. An expression of contempt. Spit in the Savior's face, an act of revulsion, an act of rejection. Some struck him with their fists. Others slapped him in the face and said, prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you. Saints of God, it was a slap that was heard around the world. When men dared to slap God, Slap Jesus 
in his face. In that face, the light of heaven. In that face, the joy of angels. In that face, the bliss of the saints. In that face, the brightness of the glory of God. In that face, the Lamb of God. In that face, God made visible. In that face, the incomprehensible God. They slapped Jesus in his face. A slap that was heard around the world. Pastor Harris, what is this text tailored to teach us this morning? It's tailored to teach us we can't cancel our appointment with pain, sorrow, and the disappointments of life. Jesus understood that there was no way to evade pain and sorrow and the disappointments of life. He knew it came with the assignment. Because before he was born, it was prophesied years, hundreds of years before his birth. Isaiah 53, verses 3, 4, 5, and 7. He was despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our face from him. He was despised and esteemed him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him not. Spitting of God and afflicted. Verse 7. He was, a, he was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He brought as a lamb to the slaughter. As a shear before the sheaves, as a lamb, he opened not his mouth. Do you hear what Jesus had an appointment with? Despised, rejection, sorrow, grief, afflicted, oppressed. Did you hear what Jesus had an appointment with? Saints of God. I know it's your first Sunday back. But it is so. It's a biblical truth. On this journey called life, we all have an appointment with pain, with trouble, with sorrow, and with affliction. Pain from some incurable disease. Pain caused by medical mishap. Pain caused by trouble on every side. Pain caused by moral indiscretion. Pain caused by mistakes. Pain caused by a lack of judgment. Pain caused by marriage gone bad. Pain caused by mother and father who forsook us. We all, you got pain. I got pain. All of God's children got pain. If you have it, just keep living. It'll find its way to your house. You can't come from after glory without some pain, without some trials, without some tribulation, without some tears, trouble on every side. Pastor, can you use me? Him a pain. Alex Haley tried to live out his father, Simon Haley's dream. However, he was unsuccessful in his efforts. Many people today are living childhood lives, trying to live their parents' dream. God never told you to live their dreams. You got to have your own dream. Simon Haley wanted Alex to be a college graduate, but Alex wanted to be a writer. 
He dropped out of college and joined the Coast Guard. Well, in the Coast Guard, against his father's wishes, he married and had children. The marriage fell apart, and he and his wife divorced. But he kept on pursuing his dream. Deeply pain over the relationship between him and his father. He co-wrote the autobiography of Malcolm X with Malcolm X. He wrote to his father on the inside of an autographed copy. I no longer need your approval, but I always need your love. He went on the right roots and it became one of the greatest prolific writers of our generation. He would have never become that if he not lived in his painful ordeal. His pain helped him become a, prof a prof prolific writer. Don't let your pain paralyze your destiny. Use your pain to catapult you into the future. A slap heard around the world. He's telling to teach us about divine restraint. So Volker said to me, Chris Rock didn't do anything when he got slapped. He saved the Oscars. Oh, yes, he did. He did something. He leaned back so he wouldn't have to absorb the total impact of the slap. And he used profanity. But in our text, Jesus used divine restraint. He doesn't do or say anything. Spit running down his face. Struck with fists after fists. And slap after slap. But he held his peace. He didn't do a thing. Spitting in his face. Slapping on his face. Been beating with fists. But he didn't say or do anything. He could have summoned Michael. The one angel to come with legions of angels and wipe Jerusalem off the map. But he didn't. He could have summoned the winds to come from the four corners of the earth and to, to make the walls fall in Jerusalem. But he didn't. He could have spoke the word and all those men would have died. But he didn't. Saints of God, when you are persecuted for the kingdom's sake, hold your peace. Don't argue. Don't first. Don't curse nobody out. Don't be arrogant. Just hold your peace. If you hold your peace, the Lord will come and see about you. The psalmist will write, harder yet may be the fight. Right may often yield to might. Wickedness a wild may ring. Satan's calls may seem the game, but there is a God that rules above with a hand of power and a heart of love. If I'm right, he'll fight my battle. If you're right, he'll fight your battle. Hold your peace. Talk to God about it, and the Lord will handle it for you. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Don't get ugly with Negroes. Just give them to the Lord. How could Jesus take the slap that was heard around the world? Couldn't cancel his appointment with pain, affliction, and sorrow. He had divine restraint. 
I leave you this morning. The last thing, it was a slap head around the world. He had divine anticipation. You remember in verse 6 and 1, when they brought two witnesses to testify against him, they said, this fellow said, I'm able to destroy the temple and build it in three days. You remember that Jesus did not respond because what they was talking about, they was talking about the temple of God that took 46 years to build. Jesus said, no, destroy this temple. Talking about his body. And I'll raise it up in three days. He was talking about the temple of his body. I was reading in Colorado how cattle and buffaloes are grazing together. They graze in the same pasture. But there's a fundamental difference between the two. When a storm comes up, the cattle stand peas. But what the cattle don't know, what they do, they run in the direction in which the storm is moving. So they stay in the storm a long time because they are running in the direction of the storm. But them old buffaloes, them buffaloes stand still. They know if they stand still long enough, the storm will pass over. I don't know about you, but I got some buffalo in me. I'm going to stand still and let the storm pass over. Because Jesus knew that it would not be long. I'm using my imagination now. Can't you hear Jesus when they're spitting on him? Can't you hear him? Just wait. I'm on time. Just wait. I'm on divine assignment. Just wait. I'm on my way to my coronation. Just wait. Tell the carpenters to build me a cross. Because I'm on my way. Just wait. Tell the blacksmith to make some nails. I'm on my way. Tell them to get a crown of thorns. Just wait. I tell you, just wait. I've got the gold on a cross. They're going to hang me high and stretch me wide. And then the blood going to come streaming down. Without the shedding of blood, no remission of sin. But just wait. That's not the end of the story. Just wait. Friday night passed. Just wait. Saturday night passed. But early on Sunday morning, he got up. All power. All power. Power to heal you. Power to save you. He picked me up, turned me around. Power to keep me in COVID. Power to put food on my table. Power to put a roof over my head. Yes, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Praise his name. That was the slap that we hear around the world. And the sad thing about it is many people in the body of Christ, you take your props from Hollywood. 
You dress like Hollywood. You talk like Hollywood. You you imitating people who are ungodly. Who ain't even got God on their mind. But this was a real slap. And I'm so glad he didn't respond. Because had he re responded, he perhaps would have forfeited the cross. Then all of us have been messed up. So I'm so thankful. And we as Christians, we got to grow up. Some folks don't come to church because what folks say about you. My Lord, that's kindergarten. I'd have long quit preaching if I'd have went by what folks said about me. I'd have threw in the towel a long time ago. You can't go by what folks say. You can't let folk dictate to you your relationship with the Lord. You know what the Lord has done for you. And I've been surprised at the number of Christians that I've heard who said, I wish he had slapped me out of the shoulder or something. And some of you said it too. You're laughing, but you said it too. You said it too. Amen. If you're watching um, live stream or if you're here this morning and you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to. The Bible said, if you would confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised it from the dead, thou shalt be saved. With the heart man, believe in the rights with the mouth. Confession and salvation, whosoever should call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. Do we have one in the sanctuary? Do we have one perhaps live streaming? If you just ask the Lord to forgive your sins and come live inside of you, uh, you can be saved. If you have, if you do that, you can call the church. We'll be glad to meet with you, come to where you are, and, and talk to you more about salvation. We want you to be saved. We do want you to be saved. We do. May we all stand. We want to put up our sick list. I want to remember Mother McCrimmon, my walking, my walking buddy, who called me. She's in more regional and not doing well. And others, those are part of our church family. We see all the names of those who are part of our church family who needs our prayer. Let us be prayer for those persons. We're going to ask that Reverend Dr. Bowden will come and lead us in a word of prayer. Let us look to the Lord. Precious God, Heavenly Father, we come right now in the strong and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Lord, first, Lord, we want to just give you honor and praise. We, we thank you, Lord, that when you were spit in the face and slapped in the face, we're thankful, Father, that your son did his assignment. He understood what he needed to do and Unlike some of us who might have reacted in the wrong way, he reacted in a way that allowed us to have the opportunity to the tree of life for the redemption of our sins, that we could be forgiven and, and find our place in the kingdom of God. And for that, Lord, we just say thank you. Could have been another way, Lord, but, but his focus was on his assignment. And Lord, we just thank you for that, that example that was set before us that if we could stay on our assignment, even when the enemy comes, when evil comes, when pain comes, we still stay on the assignment. And so, Lord, for that, Lord, we give you honor and we give you praise. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come back into the sanctuary again, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you kept us, that you watched over us, that you made it so, Lord, that we could be here one more time. We thank you, Lord, for all your blessings, the way you've kept us safe and the way you've kept us strong. And even in the midst of adversity, Lord, You've allowed us, Lord, 
to be able to come and lift your name once again, give you honor and give you praise. So, Lord, we just give you thanks. Lord, we pray for everyone that's in this building, all those that are watching on live streaming. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all of those that, that whose names were brought forth that we're praying for right now on our sick list, Lord. You know their situations. You know exactly what they need. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we ask now that you move into their situations, that you bless in their situations, that you make your presence known. And even if you decide to bring healing in on the other side, Lord, make sure their mind, their heart, their soul is ready to make that journey, to transition, to be with you forever and forever. And then, Lord, we ask right now that you bless our church family. Lord, allow us to continue to be a bright light in a dark land. Bless our pastor, Lord. Keep him strong. Bless his wife, Lord. Keep her strong and keep her faithful, Lord. And Lord, we ask all of this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, who's the leader of our life, the forgiver of our sins, and the one who redeems us in such a way that we can come boldly before the throne of grace. And we thank you, Lord, for all of this. And in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Before we, and actually you can sit for, you can actually sit for communion if you like. You can sit, I want to, let us pray. Oh, Father God, we are so thankful for this time of Holy Communion that we do this in remembrance of you and the great sacrifice that you made on Calvary's cross. Now bless this cup, bless now this bread, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to say I have worked on, I have worked on a sermon for two weeks to preach today. And that sermon was going to be strange occurrences around the table. And so I worked too hard. I might as well give you the quick pause right quick. Amen. It's going to be quick. Three minutes. It's a strange occurrence because he took the blessing and he broke the blade. That was a brokenness. There was brokenness around the uh, around the table. And the table supposed to be a place of fellowship, but it was brokenness. Then also around the table there was betrayal. Uh, Sister Joanne was taught this morning that Jesus is the one who dipped it in his cup with finger in his cup, the same who's going to betray me. Betray around the cup, and then there was blood at the table because Jesus, the cup was symbolic of his blood. The point. The point that got me when I was going to preach this text was when they came in the Garden of Gethsemane to arrest him, they was too late. Had they got him before he got to the table, we'd have been in trouble. Because everything that they was going to do to him, he had already done to himself at the table. It had already been done. Amen. It had already been done. Amen. God is good, isn't he? He is, he is good. Amen. May we take, does everyone have the communion? Do everyone have it? Does everyone have? Okay, one more. Okay. Just a few more. Now, now may we break the bread and drink of the cup. Amen. God be praised. So glad again that you all, so glad that you, so many of you came back. Thank the Lord for you. And we will, um, this is our first phase, and we will keep you apprised as to, we're going to probably go 69 days like this, and then we're going to try to incorporate people who are not, um, who's not vaccinated. So to be praying, another thing that we're going to have to work on is making sure there's a pew 
between you and the next pe other people because we're trying to keep you safe. Amen. We're trying to keep you, trying to keep you safe. Um, I thought I need a, I thought I need a love me this morning. I'll say this. She came in the office this morning and she asked me, was I okay? Which was indicating that she was a Carolina fan. <laughs> they, mm -hmm. She asked, no, she asked me three times, not one time. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> Pastor, are you okay? Amen. Amen. So, amen. So, amen. God be praised. Amen. I still love her. God bless her. Amen. Amen. She made sure of that. Yeah. And all you all in the church of Carolina fans, stop texting my phone. May we all stand. May we all stand. I love you all and God bless you. I do. I love you all and thank, thank the Lord for you and continue to pray. Remember that we will still be doing, we have Wednesday, Wednesday uh, noon uh, prayer and then we'll still be doing Bible study uh, via Zoom and Sunday morning prayer. Uh, we will start doing that. And what I might start doing is just a small group of people, small group of people that start coming out here and saturating the atmosphere with prayer in the church. Small group of people that we spread out and start just uh, come with and pray and the Lord will fill this place. So we'll let you know, we'll let you know about that. Now, oh God, we're so thankful. That it was the yeah, Chris Rock being slapped. That was wrong because all violence is wrong. But it was much worse when men slapped God. And they were religious men who walked around with scriptures on their shoulders, knew the law could be quoted, and yet they slapped our Lord. I pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, we leave from this place. When we are met with people who are cruel and rude and arrogant, fix us so we can handle it in such a godly way. Give us divine restraint that even we won't treat them the way they treat us, but they can see love in us, that you can be glorified. Now to him who's able to keep us from falling, but let's fall for your throne with a seat in great joy, power, and dominion forever. And the Redeemer of the Lord sang together. Amen. Amen. 